there's an old Opsleet uh, computer circuit board, has a part on it which is in a, a ceramic package, let's just inset a side photograph. These are kind of interesting, they're made out of uh, two slices of ceramic material, and then they're uh, actually welded together with uh, glass to make a hermetic uh, sealed package. Uh, inside there, there will be an integrated circuit. Let's de-encapsulate this package. So I've uh, mounted the integrated circuit into a vise, and uh, if you take a chisel, uh, what you can do is you can cleave the uh, the glass frit. It's going to be fairly brittle. Uh, don't use your favorite woodworking chisel because you're going to have to resharpen it. It's pretty harsh to be doing this. But uh, usually a good uh, whack will uh, pop the uh, two halves apart. Okay, now you can see here this is actually the top of the uh, top cap, uh, and the integrated circuit's actually fallen onto the floor. You probably heard but uh, in the cavity below, I'll just go to the floor here. Uh, and of course, here we of course have the integrated circuit. Nice thing about these ceramic packages is they're very easy to analyze. Let's uh, throw this under a, a camera and we'll take a picture of the whole die and then we'll toss it under the microscope to figure out uh, what in the world this thing was. So here we have the integrated circuit. Um, I'm showing it uh, right here with a Hastings triplet or a jeweler's loop. Uh, quite frankly, if you have access to some ceramic packages from the sort of late 80s, uh, it's very easy to do this analysis with uh, no more equipment than what you're seeing here. Uh, you can actually see all the structures fairly clearly, actually. So um, if you're interested in doing this yourself and you can find some of these, uh, yeah, it doesn't take a lot of equipment, quite frankly. But um, let's now take a photograph looking straight down on the package and see what we can sort down. Okay, so looking straight down, we can see the uh, package. We can, of course, see uh, the integrated circuit sitting in the center here. And then you can see what are known as bond wires coming around. Let's uh, just uh, zoom in here and uh, take a closer look right in the uh, die area. Now what we're seeing here, uh, as I mentioned, of course, the center is obviously the semiconductor. Uh, you can see the bond leads coming down. They're uh, not uh, too uh, unexpected. They kind of come in from the lead frame and they pop down to the actual silicon die. Um, you can see in uh, two cases there's actually two bond wires coming down. And this is power. Uh, the bond wires, as you might imagine, are fairly microscopic in terms of their uh, size. So you'll often see uh, for anything which carries power, we'll put down a, a couple of them. Uh, what else? You can see or see that there was uh, some sort of uh, adhesive that's uh, sort of flown up below the die. Uh, and it's exactly what it is. Basically, they're glued onto this. Uh, then the metal below, uh, which in this case actually is, of course, uh, gold. And if we just then uh, scroll over a little bit here, uh, we can sort of see that there here's the metal lead frame and of course they would, it would come out to the uh, uh, the actual leads so you can make contact with the uh, circuit board and of course uh, make use of it and it's a little bit obscured because what we're seeing here is the uh, basically the glass uh, glass frit that was uh, used to seal the package together so uh, this is a very typical construction of uh, any uh, uh, ceramic uh, dip package from this era we pop the top off this is what you can see now, you can even see in this uh, photograph here, it's uh, fairly easy to divine that there's actually some details below. Uh, but let's go into a microscope photograph to see this uh, a little bit better. Okay, so obviously a silicon die. And uh, what are we looking at here? These were the uh, bond pads where the wires came up. You can see that uh, they've now been pulled out, leaving a little crater in the silicon. Uh, we can see quite clearly that there are three different regions in the, uh, the chip here. We have one region here. Uh, one region here, and what appears to be one region here. And to sort this down, let's just zoom up a little bit into this section here, pan over, and we can see uh, some very regular structures, but if we start tracing down the lines, it becomes fairly apparent what we're looking at. Uh, we have a metal line coming down here. It runs the entire length of this array, basically right down to the bottom of the chip. Uh, and same thing here, it comes down, runs all the way to the bottom of the chip. And if you were to pan up to the uh, bottom of this column, you can see that there's actually something else happening on the exact same side. Uh, pardon me, on the bottom side, the exact same thing is happening. We get the uh, lead coming up and like this, and lead coming up like this. And of course, uh, what this is almost certainly is uh, a driver that sits uh, just below or above the array, and. Uh, the driver circuitry is somewhere here. And what's happening is that uh, you have the, the true signal here, and you have the complement signal here, and then you can you sort of see there's uh, lines going this way. And uh, what this is probably is is an AND array. So you can drive up the complement and the true, and then depending if you program the interconnect here, you can get basically ANDing of a bunch of signals. 
uh, that of course would mean that this is probably on the uh, left hand side uh, what's known as the OR array so you have AND, OR and uh, right next to it would be the output drivers sitting uh, in uh, the final column here now uh, that would be of course a uh, very typical of a programmable logic device and uh, you might ask yourself if is that programmable logic device um, right there you got to ask yourself, is this a, a programmable logic uh, array that's done with a, a, a fuse, or is it some sort of E-squared problem, uh, or is it mass programmed? And to sort that down, we have to go to a different photograph. Uh, here we have in some of the uh, zoom contacts. No, there's no fuses here. This is a metal coming down. There's some contacts being made, but there's nothing in terms of metalization. I suspect this is actually a, a, a programmable device, but what it is... Uh, is uh, it's programmed actually at the factory through uh, through the mask. It's not a uh, device which has a, a programming uh, in the field, uh, and that's quite possible. The uh, the vendor uh, was probably building a fair number of these boards at the time, so it wouldn't be too big of a surprise. Let's go to the top of the package. Here's the top of the package, uh, and I can't trace this down to anything. All I know is it's made in 1981 uh, and it has a part number, but this part number here doesn't trace to any data sheets. Uh, so I, I suspect this is actually uh, probably a custom-made part for um, the vendor that used it. Uh, this is coming from a, a DEC PDP-11 circuit board, so uh, probably a DEC uh, was the uh, uh, request for this part. So there you go. That's how you can analyze uh, ceramic circuits and uh, what you can see from there.